Hey guys, welcome back to Matthew Kelly Pottery on YouTube. I appreciate you guys being here and appreciate all of the support on the previous videos. And uh, today we're actually going to uh, do a little bit of glazing. I'm going to show you guys some, uh, some tips and some pointers on that. And uh, in the future, I'm, I already got some ideas for uh, tips and tricks uh, videos that I'm going to be putting out. Just some things that have helped me. Little, little kind of tips and little things on, on multi, multiple areas uh, of making pots and glazing and all that kind of sort of thing that will help you guys um, or maybe give you some insight on some things that you may be able to, be able to uh, change to make things easier on you. So, uh, but today I'm going to be uh, glazing some dinnerware uh, and then uh, maybe, maybe show you some multiple parts of, of glazing, different pieces. Uh, I've got some plates here, I've got some cereal bowls, I've got some tumblers and uh, probably going to show you guys multiple things in this video of how we're glazing different pieces and then if there's time um, I don't know if I'll get to spray and glaze uh, this evening but uh, this video may extend into tomorrow morning where we uh, show you how I spray glaze on pieces as well and um, but I won't be giving you necessarily recipes on the glazes that I use got to keep a few trade secrets here and there but uh, I'm going to show you guys some tips that you can use across any glazes that you use so um, the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm using actually a glaze that I have that I've mixed a little thicker to make it kind of like a slip. And I'm going to be glazing some dinnerware in a really simple uh, spiral pattern. Uh, and I'm actually going to be using the wheel head. One of the things that if you guys have, um, this is a brand, but most wheels that I've seen have rings on the wheel. And that's a good little uh, thing to help you. Like, cause I'm just going to be setting these uh, plates on the wheel head as I uh, center them and then put the glaze on them. And so that's a great little tip, uh, a little thing to help you start off getting the piece more in the center of the wheel. So I'm going to set the set the plate down, kind of get an idea, and I can spin it a little, um, spin it a little bit, and kind of see where it is, and then push it. Um, doesn't have to be perfect for what I'm doing, but uh, pretty close to center it helps because I'm going to be doing a spiral starting from the center. Um, and so get, getting the consistency of your, of your glaze is, is really uh, a, a tip that's, that's a, a big um, part of making this work. Um, I've got this mixed pretty thick. Um, and also, uh, sometimes I have it, it's not thick enough. I'll use some Epsom salt dissolved in water. I keep a bottle of that around and I can put a few drops in a bottle of glaze like this and thicken it up. You don't want to use too much because that could kind of play with the chemistry of the glaze as well but just a little bit's not going to hurt um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to start in the center and make a swirl all the way out and and there's no you know things if, if you mess up during this process you can always clean it off and start over and sometimes the 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 glaze bottle will will burp or spurt and that that causes a problem too um, I'm also going to put a line on these up here just under the rim And so what I do with my plates, at least with this design, that's a really simple design, but being done on a wheel makes it very simple. Uh, I take these and then spray an ash glaze over the whole piece. Uh, it it kind of helps do two things. It kind of helps melt and, and run this glaze in, in the flat surface, but it also covers in the areas that are not covered with this glaze here. Um, and uh, it kind of fills in the gaps. So uh, we'll do a couple of these, and, and I'll show you a couple different angles also as we, as we do this and uh, we'll go from there.
like to use my foot pedal uh, while I'm doing this as well because as as I go from the from the center out uh, on the on on the bottom of the piece as I'm glazing, of course, at the same speed that you're decorating the center as you get out here, it's actually going to get uh, faster because of the, the width of the plate. So a lot of times as I'm moving out, I may adjust the speed and slow down the wheel so that I can uh, get just the same amount of glaze on the outside as, as I do on the inside. And then again, too, I'm not too worried that it's perfect, um, but trying to get it similar, it really does help if you're uh, making, this is going to be a dinnerware set for a friend of mine. So trying to get them all uh, similar is, is a big benefit. Now we're going to do a design uh, on one of the cereal bowls, and uh, this is one of many different designs that I do. Um, so uh, you know, feel free to take the idea and run with it. You know, uh, my goal anytime I see a design of something, um, I don't nef necessarily and I, and I hardly ever you know, want to exactly copy what somebody else has done. I, I, I definitely take inspiration from things I see, and and then try to make those ideas my own and change them up a little bit. Um, but this just some little tips. One of the things that I'm going to do is, is go ahead and center this bowl just like I would one of the plates. And after I get it centered here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a pencil and I'm going to draw a few lines based on the design that I know I'm going to do. Just some guidelines uh, that I'll work with. So um, I'm going to do... Uh, Actually, let me show you one of the bowls, uh, what it's going to look like finished. So here's one of the bowls that I'm actually going to be doing. And so this is made up of multiple uh, multiple lines and designs and dots. And so this is what I'm going to be doing on the inside of this bowl. So the first two lines I'm drawing is kind of going to be like the top of my flower design here. And the bottom is going to be the bottom of the flower design. And, um, and then what I'm going to do is break this up into six parts. So I'm going to start by doing a line here going to the opposite side doing another line and the rest of it is just kind of eyeballing I'm gonna go like a third of the way in between those two dots and put a line and then go halfway in between those two and put a line and do the same thing for the other half getting and then I'm gonna do on the bottom line I'm gonna go right in between each of these dots and I'm gonna put a mark on the bottom line so I'm basically dividing the whole bowl up uh, top and bottom line each into six parts uh, while it's centered on the wheel, I'm going to go ahead and do my swirl that's in the bottom and I'm going to do the line that's up here on the top of the rim and the rest of it I'm going to do by hand uh, holding the bowl in my hand. So I'm going to do a little bit of a swirl in the bottom and I'm going to do this line up here on the top. Actually my, uh, my top line for the flower design should probably be down a little bit more so I'm going to go ahead and draw another line down there. Uh, but I'm still going to kind of use the, the dots that I made, breaking that up into six parts. The rest of this is going to be done where I connect all my dots from the, the bottom to the top lines, and then I'm going to put dots in between.
Now in between all those, I'm actually just going to eyeball this. And I'm going to put put those uh, six dots in an alternating pattern inside each of those kind of like triangles that go from the center to the out outside. So I end up with that design right there. And by the time I spray the ash glaze over top of that, I'll get a lot of those runs and trips and I'll get some of this, uh, some of the ash build up in the bottom, which gives the darker color. And uh, it turns out it looked a lot like that bowl that you just saw uh, that I showed you a minute ago. So I'm gonna do another dozen or so of these and then. Now what I'm going to show you guys is some footage that we recorded of me spraying glaze on the dinnerware set and uh, it's, a, it's a bit noisy and a bit loud while I'm doing that as well as I'm wearing, wearing a mask and uh, it happened to be pretty chilly that morning that we were spraying glaze so uh, I've still got my toboggan on, I've got uh, wearing some nice rubber gloves and that's, that's I guess there's two reasons I do that. I'm using an ash glaze that is uh, about half of that glaze is actually wood ashes that I've sieved, uh, wood ashes that I've collected from my wood stove and then uh, sieved through a window screen and then measured out and put in the glaze. And uh, ash, if you've never messed with it, uh, it's a very caustic and it's very, um, it can be very damaging and, and dry out your skin really, really badly. So I, I wear gloves when I'm messing with the glaze. And I don't get a whole lot on me while I'm spraying. I've got a really nice spray booth uh, that a friend of mine made me and uh, it, it sucks out most of the fumes but just to, just for protection I wear the gloves and wear the mask and all that. What you can see here is that I've actually got a, another plate that I've turned upside down uh, that I'm placing the, the plates that I'm spraying on uh, and that's to kind of match the size of the, of the bottom of the plates that I'm spraying so that I don't get a whole lot of overspray on the underneath side of the plates. Um, that helps with the, the cleanup afterwards because you can see here that I spray the underside of the rim and then I uh, switch to kind of going up on top of the uh, plate kind of making a circle in motion and then I spray the, the, the bottom of it. Now just with this particular ash glaze and the way I've learned to work with it um, and I think just spraying glaze in general, I think you have to spray the glaze on uh, fairly thick to make it to work out. Um, because if you think about dipping a glaze, uh, you're getting a lot more glaze on uh, by dipping a glaze than by spraying it. And so uh, I, when I first started spraying glaze, it really kind of concerned me that I was going to get too much glaze on, especially this being an ash glaze that's made um, so that it's unstable basically and it will run and drip. But uh, the great thing about spraying the glaze is I can spray it lightly on one part of the pot and spray it more heavily on another part. So the underneath side of the rim of these plates, I do not, I do not spray a whole lot of glaze. I spray just enough to get a really nice toasty brown look, maybe a little bit of the rivulets from the ash glaze. But as you can see on the inside, I spray a whole lot of glaze. And uh, I'm gonna um, show you the, the dinner plates here and then switch over and now you can see the salad plates going on. And those are pretty much the same process. Uh, just a little bit smaller plate and uh, here in just a second we'll switch over 
and uh, we'll show you the um, cereal bowls that I'm spraying. And uh, the only footage I have of, uh, is of the, the plates and the, um, and the cereal bowls. Um, I've got uh, plenty of other things that I sprayed, but just to give you guys a general idea of how these, uh, how these things are done. Um, one of the things I look for when I'm spraying, like I said, specific to this glaze is that I want the glaze to kind of uh, build up and get really wet looking as you can kind of see on the inside of the plate. And uh, it's just kind of trial and error. You have to figure out what works with your glaze and the way you're going to fire it and how it's going to interact with like that blue glaze that I put underneath it. Um, so, uh, you know, you'll have to look at it. If you're doing this for yourself, you'll have to just figure that out and what's going to work best for you and how thick to apply that glaze and uh, figure it out. So anyway, uh, I'll stop here and then um, we'll pick it back up here in a second when we go to the cereal bowls. All right, now you can see we're switching over to the uh, cereal bowls, and as you can see, I've taken a uh, tumbler and turned it upside down, mainly, like I said, just to kind of match or mimic the size of the bottom of the cereal bowl, uh, just for that overspray, and also to elevate the piece so that I can get the underside of the bowl uh, easy, um, more easily sprayed. And as you can see with this, I'm spraying a, a quite a bit of glaze on the inside till it builds up. And then on the outside, I do spray a little bit extra on these because I've got more of a vertical surface to get some more of that um, uh, kind of ash glaze interaction, the drips and runs that I can get by spraying that more heavily. And I don't do that in just a solid uh, line or ring on the outside because I think it looks better if it's a little varied. And that's just from, uh, from practice and, and kind of experience. And uh, of course, you know, the only way to really learn all this is, is to do it a lot and to know how it interacts with the way that you're going to fire, where the pieces are in the kiln, how hot you're firing, the glaze chemistry, all the, all how the glazes interact with each other. So these are just kind of some basic ideas and concepts that you guys can take and use for yourself. And as you can see, even after I'm done spraying, I have to be really careful about the way I pick them up. Um, even though the, the sprayed on glaze does dry quicker than like a dipped piece, uh, it still is pretty wet when I pick the piece up and want to move it to uh, to put another piece on the uh, on the turntable there. And I've actually got uh, uh, an older wheel of mine set in uh, underneath my spray booth so that I don't have to use an actual banding wheel to have to turn with my hand. It's just a little thing that I've found that works better for me. But uh, like I said, you guys can use this uh, these ideas here just to figure out what works for you and uh, how the glazes interact with each other and just have some fun. That's the great thing about uh, pottery is just being able to play around with it and have some fun and see, you know, you got to take the bad with the good because all the results are not peachy, as you guys know. And uh, But anyway, I think we're getting close to the end of the video here, but I appreciate you guys being here and supporting the channel and uh, appreciate you guys supporting my work as a whole. And uh, you guys are, are great. And uh, thanks for all the views and comments. Like I said before, if you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to leave them uh, down below and I'll get back to them as soon as I can. So thanks. You guys have a great day.